that from a, a year. Uh, but it is always fatal. There's two variants of it. There's classical Creutzfeldt-Jakob's disease, and there's um, there's variant Creutzfeldt-Jakob's disease. So with that, basically, one of the big differences is in diagnosis, and there's big differences as well in how long the person lasts and what age they usually get infected. With classical CJD, uh, typically patients will last 13 to 14 months. With variant CJD, they typically last significantly shorter, only around seven or eight months. Um, so even though only one in every million die a year from CJD, it's suspected that by the time of death, out of everyone who dies, at the time of death, they suspect that up to one in every 10,000 may have an infectious prion disease. However, at the time that they die, it's confused with another neurological disease such as Alzheimer's or um, Parkinson's, those kind of diseases. And they just don't perform aut autopsies on all the bodies, so they don't really know how many people at the time they die have abnormal prions in their brain. But it's suspected that it could be up to one in every 10,000. Those people do die of different causes, though. They're not killed by the prions. So with variant Creutzfeldt-Jakob's disease, uh, like I said, the big difference is they typically last a shorter amount of time. And typically, people that get infected, the mean age for people infected with classic CJD are 68 years old. Typically, with people infected with DCJD are only 28 years old. So BSE or bovine spongiform encephalopathy, or encephalopathy, sorry, that's a hard word to say. It makes a great tongue, tongue twister though, if you ever want to say that 10 times fast. You're actually doing it? <laughs> so it's a prion disease that affects bovines or cows. Bovines are just cattle, it's a scientific name for cattle. Um, in the mid-1990s, 1995 through 1997, there was a huge outbreak of BSC in Great Britain, and it caused a massive scare, and basically what they decided on doing eventually is slaughtering all British cattle herds, and starting fresh, because there was a great concern that this would be transmitted to people, and as there was um, 11 Transmit, or what they think may have been transmitted from BSC to variant Creutzfeldt-Jakob's disease in humans. Um, but this is just a picture of the epidemic, what they basically did. They killed all the cattle and then they burned them. So, I mean, it was a great waste of beef and leather and resources like that, but there was huge amounts of concern and other countries in the European Uni Union most of them were instating bans on European or on British beef at the time because there's concern that it would break into a human epidemic, and we didn't want that because we had no way of treating prion diseases. So other prion diseases are scrappy and sheep. Uh, Gerstmann Strassler sheep or GSS in humans. I'm not actually sure how you pronounce it. German, I'd say. Yeah. Well, it's taken German, you still can't say it. Yeah, it's probably like the Schicke in humans. Uh, that's just another neurodegenerative disease. Uh, FFI, fatal familial insomnia, is another neural disorder in humans. Kuru was in humans, but that's gone now because the tribes that were practicing cannibalistic practices are no longer cannibalizing each other, so it's not a concern, and the disease has basically disappeared. Um, and various other spongiform encephalopathy, encephal, encephalopathies, I'm sorry, um, which they found in deer, mink, elk, and felines, and chronic wasting disease in deer and elk. Um, basically, what a spongiform encephalopathy is, is it's just a disease that causes the vacuoles to form in the brain, and it basically makes the brain into a sponge a little bit. That's where they get the name from. So, um, Really, you shouldn't be worried about prions, like getting a prion disease, because they're not very common. Usually they're genetic. Um, 
So checkpoint two, how do prions spread organism to organism? Peter? Genetically, with mutations or consumption of infected prions. Yes. Um, also, just to add to that, prions do not spread through normal contact. If you shake someone's hand and they have Creutzfeldt-Jakob's disease, you're not going to get Creutzfeldt-Jakob's disease. Even if they sneeze on you, it's not transmitted unless you're eating a contaminated nerve. A contaminated, yeah, basically contaminated meat from that person. So. Unless you're doing something really deviant, you should not be getting any prion diseases from any person. So, uh, what is Creutzfeldt-Jakob's disease? Just a brief overview of the disease. Dan? The human prion, um, I guess, version of the, um, what was it, yes, or whatever, the cows of walk they want. Yeah. But, um, it forms the vacuoles in the brain, which ensures it and kills it off. Mm -hmm. Anyone have anything to add to that? Or? Peter? There's two types of it, variant and classical. And the classical typically affects people in their 70s ish, and the variant affects people in their 20s ish. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and also, the, the clinical signs and symptoms are different. Um, we didn't go into that, but basically with classic CJD, you see what look like early neurologic signs of dementia or Alzheimer's, but they're a lot younger than people would typically be getting Alzheimer's. Whereas uh, with variant CJD, it's typically, you see prominent psychiatric and behavioral symptoms, and um, it's more delayed in the neurological signs. Um, there's also differences in what their brain waves look like on EEG, whereas they have sharp spikes and sharp waves on an EEG with classic CJD, but not so much in the CJD. So, uh, and last question, how does variant Creutzfeldt-Jakob's disease differ from classic Creutzfeldt-Jakob's disease? Yeah? Well, on the variant one, And they think the variant one's linked with BSC, and the classical one, as far as they know, is not. So. Uh, with research in, into cures and research in prions, there is no known cure for prion diseases, as they are always 100% fatal in people. Um, basically, why they're so difficult to cure is they're not affected by vaccines, antibiotics, they're not affected by heat, they're not affected by radiation like you could treat cancer with. They're basically not affected by any traditional methods of treatment. Um, what they've looked into is treating them with prote protozoan or proteases, um, which are compounds that break apart proteins, or are those protosomes? Yeah, they're protosomes. Um, they're compounds that break apart proteins, but what they found is that in some of these diseases, the prions are actually resistant to the protosomes. Mm -hmm. So they've looked into branching polyamines, which is basically just amines that branch into different sections. It's, uh, it's kind of hard to explain. It's like a branching polymer, kind of. Um, what they do, what they found is that in cell cultures, in a laboratory environment, they'll break up the prion, uh, the clusters of abnormal prion proteins, and they'll actually clear them up. And then they found other compounds that they can use to stop the creation of more abnormal proteins. Um, so there has been looking, they have been looking into cures for them, but they haven't had anything successfully tested in mice or animals or in humans. It's just been in a cultured cell laboratory environment. Any questions? Ben? How do you choose prions for this? Um, the 
That's a good question. I was interested in doing something with neuroscience, but, um, and I don't know, prions are just kind of fascinating because they're infectious proteins, and typically infectious particles are, typically have genetic material like viruses or bacteria, whereas prions don't, and they actually convert other proteins, which was kind of cool. So that was pretty much how I decided. Any other questions? Okay, so I have homework on this lecture. Oh. Oh. So, <laughs>